Thank you, Krista. Again, if you'll bear with me for just a minute, I want to bring the agenda up on my screen here. I can find it. Can I ask who is on the DSP's iPad so I can update that name? It'd be Sergeant Andrews Bell, State Patrol. What was, I'm sorry, what was the name? Sergeant Andrews Bell, State Patrol. Okay, thank you. Well, I cannot find my agenda. Why is that? Hey, Jim, I just emailed you the, I just forwarded the email with the agenda. So you should have another copy in a few seconds. Oh, great. Thank you. That was Kelly, right? Yes. Yeah. I'll do it. Hello? Ah, got it. Thank you, Kelly. You're welcome. Now, if I can get back into my Zoom. All right, folks, apologize for the delay. I did lose track of time a little bit here this morning or I'd have been better prepared. Uh, I'm gonna call the meeting of the Traffic Safety and Emergency Medical Services Committee to order. Uh, this is a committee of the Dunn County Board of Supervisors. Uh, it is- There's nobody uh, else gonna join us. It is Friday. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I, I set this thing up and I-, I can't imagine that if there was another meeting, you know, another Zoom link since I set it up, but I'm, I'm a little bit nervous on why nobody else. Who are we hearing from right now? It sounded like Jones Worski. Yeah, it sounded like what he would say. Uh, yeah, so that, that was John. I think he's called it. Looks like he's called in on the phone. Okay. John, are you on the phone? Let 
Now he's gone entirely. Well, we're going to proceed with uh, with the meeting. Um, John, are you here? So nobody's taking minutes then either. Oh my goodness. Well, on on the upside, since we're recorded, the minutes can probably be done ex post facto. That's probably correct. Patty Keene, um, Jim. Patty Keeney's on, and she'll be taking minutes. Patty is taking minutes. Yeah. Ah, she's great. Yeah. Who is? Patty Kinney. Okay, thank you, Patty. Um, <clears throat> rather than uh, call the roll at this time, we'll just check off those people who are here who are scheduled to give a report. Is that satisfactory with everyone? Um, I would entertain a motion to uh, approve the minutes of the June 19th meeting. You should have received that in your packet of information. Uh, and you'll probably need to speak up since I can't see everyone on my screen at the same time. Motion to approve the minutes of the June meeting. Scott McRoberts would make a motion. McRoberts moves. Bill Yink second. Yink seconds. All those in favor of the motion. Oh, I should ask if there are any corrections or additions. All those in favor of the motion to approve the minutes say aye. 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 Right. Any opposed? The motion carries. Thank you very much. Uh, we don't have any public, uh, so there will be no public comment. We'll get right into the reports and we'll do it in the same order that are that's in the agenda, obviously. So uh, starting with DOT traffic engineer, Chad Hines. Chad, you want to take it? Chad, yep. here. Right, good morning, everybody. I'll start off with uh, where we're at on our 2020 construction projects. Um, the first project, I-94, Knapp Hill area. Um, right now, from the from 128 to the top of the hill, we're working on removing all of our temporary roadway that we've built over the last couple of years and used. Um, on uh, uh, Earlier this week, we switched the westbound um, back to the new pavement that we've just placed. And yesterday morning, we switched traffic for eastbound so that now we can start reconstructing the eastbound side. So we're split one lane eastbound on the original alignment, and then one lane goes down the westbound hill, just opposite of what we've been doing the last two months out there. Um, the contractor's saying they're gonna be a little more aggressive here, and we're hoping to have all of the eastbound hill done by the end of October, and then um, final grading and get all of our temporary removals done by the middle of November. That's of course weather permitting. Highway 12 from County B to 94. They just started milling out there. Um, we got probably about three weeks or so of paving, looking at having that done by October 15th. Um, they do have a three day um, maximum allowance um, before they have to start paving on top of the milled surface. So hopefully we don't have the, the milled surface out there any longer than we need to. And then the last project we still have going on in Dunn County is Highway 25 from the South County line to the Red Cedar River. Um, the new alignment is done uh, where we kind of straightened out that curve a little bit. Um, right now we're working on the shoulder widening for our five foot paved shoulders that'll have rumble strips on it. Um, should be starting milling and paving soon. That one they have to pave uh, within 48 hours after milling. So that's a little bit tighter time frame on that. Um, and looking at having that project complete by the end of October. Um, other traffic related items, we had a public information meeting uh, at the end of August here on the Stout Road project from um, 6th to 21st in the city of Menominee for that road diet. Um, we've gotten quite a bit of public feedback. Um, there's mixed reactions on it, but uh, still we're getting quite a bit of positive feedback too. So we're moving forward with the project yet still. Um, and one thing that we're looking at probably doing is not painting the bike lanes on the outside. That seems to kind of be a sticking point with everybody. And, you know, I really need to consider, are we really gonna have bikes on that, on that busy highway? Um, and it's still looking at being constructed in 2022. Um, the other thing, um, 
We get periodic complaints from time to time on the Highway 12 and H intersection in Elk Mound. Um, this summer we went and um, we increased the size of the stop signs and we actually doubled them up on both sides. So we'll see if that kind of kind of takes care of people's concerns about not being able to see the stops and especially in that northbound direction with the utility poles and stuff in the way. Um, I guess if it still seems to be a concern with everybody, we'll look at what it may take to possibly put in an overhead stop sign or move some of those utility poles, but that could be quite an expensive undertaking to do that. So we'll, we'll see if this little treatment we've done here kind of helps um, curb some of those concerns. So anybody got any questions on anything I went through? Chad Scott here, um, that 25 South project, um, what are we gonna do um, going into the winter? Are we gonna put snow fencing on that? I know you had talked about lining that north side or northwest side with trees e eventually. Yeah, there, um, as part of the project, we're gonna be planting living snow fence on the north side of that. So um, I don't know how tall, it's generally like a shrub or like an evergreen type tree. Um, I don't know for sure what they're putting in there, but we'll have to see what that looks like after it's planted. And we may need to consider snow fence for a little while until that gets established. But um, I know as part of that project, we are putting in some living snow fence. Okay, thank you. Yep. Any other questions for Chad? I just have a question regarding roundabouts. Are there, um, are there any plans for roundabouts in Dunn County? I mean, there's a number of intersections that maybe could benefit from that. And just curious what the overall thought about that is. Um, nope, we don't have any long-term plans for any roundabouts in the county. Um, Dunn County is still one of those counties that we've, we haven't installed any yet. So um, we do have our eye on, you know, on intersections to see if, if any would benefit, but right now we, we don't have any. Anything else for Chad? Thank you, Chad. We'll move on to DOT law enforcement. Rick, is Rick here? I'm here. Uh, is my audio working okay? You're good. Working okay? Yep. Okay, I uh, emailed out the report this morning. Uh, hopefully everybody got it, but uh, I'll just briefly go through a couple things. Uh, year to date crashes, uh, 363 fatal crashes statewide compared to 359 last year, uh, 400 people killed compared to 385. If I recall correctly, at our last meeting, our numbers were down quite a bit from last year, <clears throat> but that has changed significantly um, since we've seen the, the traffic go up. Um, also would make note out of that, that 79 of those our motorcycle drivers or operators. Um, that number seems to be going up also. Um, the uh, second page, uh, just a reminder, the new address for Community Maps. Uh, we used to tell you to Google Community Maps Wisconsin and, and pull the first one that came up. And now we have an address of communitymaps.wi.gov, just makes it a little easier for people to find. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, there was an addition to Community Maps uh, a number of months ago where you can actually, uh, in the advanced category, you can go down and, and uh, pull in your agency to see just what crash reports your agency has taken. Um, again, it makes it a little easier for uh, law enforcement to see who's actually taking reports. Uh, maybe it doesn't make a, a big difference in Dunn County, <clears throat> but uh, in some of the, the significantly larger counties like Milwaukee, Dane County, et cetera, uh, if you consider like city of Milwaukee or city of Madison, uh, there's areas that are considered to be part of the city, but aren't really taken care of by the police department. They may be taken care of by the county or the state patrol. Um, the interstate's usually the one that, that uh, makes a difference. So, you know, for instance, here, the sheriff could look for all crashes on the interstate and see how many the sheriff is actually taking the report. If for some reason they needed that information. Um, the statistics for the, uh, the county so far this year compared to last year, as you can see, the numbers are down quite a bit. Um, overall crashes are down almost 200 uh, for the same time last year. Uh, and they're pretty much down in every category. Uh, property damage is down like 150, which is, is quite a bit. Um, and then if you look at the lower portion of that, 
the statistics screen. <clears throat> uh, you can also see that the factors uh, are down by quite a bit. I mean, speed is about half of what it was last year. Uh, and you can also note the the part to the right of the number where it says speed 79 and then 0 31. The zero is the number of people killed in a speed related crash, and the 31 is the number of people injured. So you can see last year, two of the fatal crashes involved speed. This year, there haven't been any. Um, teen driving uh, or driver crashes are down significantly. I think that is probably due to the fact that school hasn't been open until recently. Um, so most of the numbers are, are down uh, significantly from last year for the county. Thank you, Rick. Anything else? Yeah, I'm, I couldn't get my screen to move you. Uh, oh. County, uh, I think we reviewed those three at the last meeting, Scott, correct? I think we reviewed all of those. Yes, we did, yeah. Um, those were the three uh, locations. Uh, as you can see, the flags are one was a teen driver, one was 65 plus, and then uh, only one of those was in the body alcohol and somebody wasn't wearing a, a seat belt or helmet. Crash mapping, the uh, county is doing really well. There's only five crashes that haven't been mapped. <clears throat> um, if you look back probably what, three years ago, we were quite a bit different from that before we really started to uh, uh, pursue the, the need to properly map them. Then I just looked at a couple of uh, things to see roughly where our crashes are happening. Uh, the map will show you the numbers. It's not a big surprise that the majority of them are along the interstate. Uh, the next one shows where the speed related crashes are. Again, they're on the major highways, it appears to be. Um, none of those seem to, to pop up with an area of concern or surprise. <clears throat> Same thing with the alcohol or drug. They seem to uh, be focused around the Menominee area, which I would imagine is probably the higher uh, traffic area in the county. Uh, then I took a look at uh, just looking at the injury and fatal crashes, the significant injury and fatal crashes, of which there were 60. Uh, three were fatalities, 74 injuries. And again, you can see 22 of those crashes are right in the Menominee area. Uh, and uh, next, using the predictive analytics, one of the tabs on the, on the community maps will let you predict where can we see crashes in the next whatever, 60, 90, 30 days. I looked at the next 90 days and looked at things that law enforcement can actually have a, a direct impact on, such as speed, uh, seat belt, uh, speed, distracted driving, et cetera. Um, and you can see in the Manami area, as well as the Manami area along 94, are the two primary areas where uh, we were most likely to see those type of crashes. Uh, and then I broke that down into uh, shifts, um, just to kind of give you an idea of how different it can be. Uh, when you look at the day shift, you can see where, again, they're in the Menominee area and maybe a little bit west. Um, afternoons is directly in the Menominee area, but at night, it's over in the outbound area. Uh, I don't know if that's something that you guys are seeing, uh, Scott, but it's kind of roughly where you can expect to see those type of crashes happening in the next 90 days. Uh, targeting, I'm not sure if uh, do you have Mike or Joel that covers you, Mike Ponish or Joel uh, Davis? Mike, and we're approved for next year already. In the summer speed grant? Correct. Yeah. Which you're not targeted for occupant protection and not targeted for um, impaired driving, which is a good thing. It means that those crashes are not at a high rate and they don't rise to the level of needing funding. Um, so while many times I know the sheriff would like to get money for extra enforcement, the goal is to get off of the targeting list so that your crash numbers and your crash rates are low enough that it's not a problem that rises to the level of, of funding needs. So, you know, the, the one side, at least where I worked in Fond du Lac, the sheriff always liked getting the money, but the goal is to eventually get off of that list so your crash rates are low enough that funding isn't isn't needed, it doesn't hit the targeting level. 
Uh, and then the uh, last thing I have is the mobilizations, uh, the one that just finished, Drive Silver, uh, finished September 7th. Make sure that law enforcement submits the report through WISE grants. Um, there may be a change in the equipment grants that go along with those. Uh, there's been some pushback from NHTSA, but I'm not sure where that's going to go or what's going to happen. Um, we're hoping to at least be able to continue to do that. One out of three gets $4,000. Um, I'm not sure if that'll continue or not, but uh, we'll keep you apprised of that. So if there's any questions, let me know. Otherwise, that is all I have, sir. Thank you, Rick. Any questions for him? Pretty thorough report. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, moving on to railroad. I don't see Mike here. Is there anybody from railroads? Speak now or forever hold your peace till the next meeting. Um, highway safety. Scott, you're up. All right. Well, as far as sheriff's office crashes that we've handled uh, since June 10th, last meeting until September 10th, 61 total crashes, four deer that we handled, uh, 20 multi-vehicle crashes, 41 single vehicle crashes, 19 crashes with injuries, and 21 or 23 total persons injured out of those crashes. As I was putting down zero fatals yesterday, I always get a little bit hesitant putting that zero down. And we had a serious crash come in right after that. 25-year-old uh, gal northbound on County Q in the village of Knapp approaching US 12. Went right through the intersection. Um, we're not clear why right now. Struck some guardrails uh, sections that are placed at Madison Contractors. Um, it looks like it is gonna be a fatality. Um, so we'll report a little more on that one next time. Um, we participated in Click It or Ticket June 22nd through July 5th, and then uh, drive sober or get pulled over August 21st through September 7th, which does make us eligible for whatever equipment grants may exist uh, in the future here. Um, speed grant we just we are concluding that here at the end of september we've participated we are awarded thirty thousand dollars through dot um, for the months of june july august and september i think we're going to spend around 20 to twenty two thousand of that um, and we're, we're already approved as rick had said for next year and yeah we want to get off that list um, and as rick had noted our crashes are right back to where they were historically um, prior to last meeting, we, we were down with COVID, but everybody's back to driving and really moving. So I'm just curious, once Highway 25 gets done, road speeds tend to increase when you got such a nice smooth road. So it'd be interesting. I think we need to get some speed enforcement going down there once we're open on that again. Um, but that's all I have, any questions? Scott, uh, for you and Rick both, the, the crashes have come back up because of the increase. Is there, is there uh, uh, data indicating number of miles being driven? Are we back to normal roughly? Um, I know that for a while when, when things were kind of closed down and there was very little traffic, seems like speeds went up. Um, are, are we more back to normal now? Normal volume of traffic a little bit slower now because there are more cars on the road any stats like that available nothing i have directly but i would just say traffic volume is certainly up and over nighttime traffic volume too i think has increased with people out moving around a lot more um but i don't have any data on that directly i could chime in a little bit too on the volumes um we got a count site on 94 just west of wilson creek there and um I checked that probably every other week or so I download the data from it and we're probably within a thousand cars a day from what we were, you know, last time at last year at this time. So we're, we're just about back to normal. Okay. And a thousand cars over what total number? Um, we're looking at, you know, high 30,000. Okay. So we're roughly within three to 5% or something. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Oh, thank you all. Anything else for uh, Scott? Thank you, Scott. Uh, John Swarski, you got anything from highways? Uh, yeah, just a couple things here. Uh, County Trunk Q, 
we got that all put back together. Uh, just needs to be shouldered and we need to put the fog line on. They went in and striped center line here last week. Uh, County V, uh, same deal. That one's all back together for the season. Uh, J, we put gravel on it yesterday. They're scheduled to start milling and pulverizing that on Monday, Tuesday. And then uh, pretty much we've been doing some paver patches here to get some smooth spots before winter on a couple of the bad sections of the road. And then we're in the process of getting the concrete patches here that buckled from the heat this summer. Uh, 1229, there's a few. Um, I don't know if we have any left on I-94 that need to be addressed yet this year, um, but got a handful of them. We're gonna try and get here before the weather gets too cold. But otherwise it's just our regular routine maintenance here. We're just prepping and getting everything ready for winter. Seems too early for that. I know, I know. We're getting salt uh, for the last two, three weeks. So starting to fill the sheds. Thank you, John. Questions for John. Um, Kelly, Highway Department Chair, have anything to add to that? Uh, no, John's doing, uh, got everything that I would possibly think of. I'm pretty much redundant for this meeting. <laughs> here anyway. that you're redundant, not in the British sense. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Menominee Police, Rick or anybody from the Menominee Police? Somebody's on a phone line down here. I don't know who that is. Menominee Police, going once. Um, State Patrol, Tatsuo. Did I pronounce that? Oh, uh, yes, you did. You did. Great. Okay. Get it. So, all State Patrol, uh, the past 90 days, I believe we handled approximately about 62 crashes uh, in and around the county. Um, we just finished up with our bots. Uh, air support unit speed details. Uh, we did two in Dunn County and we pretty much, we were still, the pilot was still able to see the markers right through the Nap Hill construction zone. So we actually ran uh, two speed details through there um, with about between four and seven troopers each time. Um, one was a Monday, one was a Saturday. And actually speeds were about in that 60 mile an hour zone. We were getting an average speed about 80 miles an hour with about 60 stops each time we, we ran a detail there. Um, I think the highest speeds we had were about 91 or 92 uh, each time. Um, we still have vehicles, uh, dedicated mitigation cars in the zone twice a day um, from six to 10 and then three to seven. And then our inspectors are also working a little bit later hours. So they're still available, um, not only in the interstate in the scale, but also on the county roads, uh, checking weights also. Um, Finished our clicker ticket mobilization there at the end of August through September, through the beginning of September. And then we, on uh, no, next week, Tuesday, the Operation Clear Track, we'll have some troopers over by uh, County B and the, the tracks going over there to do some enforcement throughout the day on the school buses and the tankers and whatnot. And that's all I got. Great, thank you. Any questions for uh, Highway Patrol? I would just say thanks to Tatsuo for the help in, at, during the Ridgeland Fair. They provided some trooper coverage up there. We had drive sober going on and we were pretty much tied up with event coverage, but uh, they're a big help in helping out up there. I appreciate it. Yep, no problem, anytime. Great. Anybody else, anything else? If not, uh, Jamie McDermott from Natural Resources, DNR. I don't see anybody from DNR, is there, that I'm not seeing? DNR, don't see any response. And we'll go to school administrators. Bill? Uh, good morning, everybody. Bill, uh, Bill Yank, Superintendent Colfax Schools. A uh, couple of things. Um, our bus drivers are uh, driving a little differently um, than normal. And uh, what I mean by that is the mask wearing. Uh, we made a decision as a district, and I think most of the districts around us that um, when the bus driver is driving down the road, they are not wearing a mask on their face simply due to glasses fogging up and things like that. We're trying to avoid any uh, hindrance uh, and safety issues that way. Um, something we're putting, I put out every year, I've been doing this for years, but um, um, the east sun is shining down our, our east-west roads right now in the mornings, and that has created uh, traffic issues in the past, mainly people 
driving uh, towards a school bus that stopped and the uh, sun is in their eyes as they're driving to the east. And um, this is a time of the year that we try to be vigilant and uh, make that known in our district. Um, have our bus drivers be extra vigilant uh, just uh, because of that. So uh, if you talk to anybody out there, uh, spread that word that uh, you know the sun is obviously shining down the roads, but at bus stops that makes it pretty hazardous on uh, um, east-west roads. We did have a car go through one of our bus, uh, our buses that were stopped in Highway 64 the other day. Um, bus was completely stopped, stop sign out, the stop arm was out and a car going 55 to 60 miles an hour just blew right past it. Um, luckily the parent was out there and we've got a pretty good system uh, in that particular stop. Unfortunately, the cameras we have on the bus, we've got between five and six cameras on every bus on the exterior of the bus where the camera was located, the camera for some reason, it was installed by the factory too, but it was tipped down just enough. We couldn't catch a license plate. So we're going through all of those cameras uh, currently to make sure that uh, uh, they are focused in the right, uh, right spot. Um, I wanna thank Scott uh, McRoberts. He checked out a bus stop for us in County Road B on one of the sharp 90 degree corners by the Tainer uh, Church. Um, on that area, I think we've got a safe uh, resolution to that. And I uh, just want to thank Scott and law enforcement for what they're doing. I um, know it's not an easy time to be uh, in law enforcement and just appreciate all the support and efforts there. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Any questions uh, for Bill? Interesting comment, uh, both about the bus driver's masks and the uh, uh, the sun in your eyes, uh, well, we've all had the experience and I would imagine it would be difficult to see red lights on a bus. Of course, that's why they're big and yellow. Um, Gary Steen, County Board, I don't see Gary here anywhere. Uh, Ryan Howe from the community. Ryan, do you have any comments for us today? Uh, I was just gonna go back with, hi, I'm Ryan Howe with Menominee Transportation, um, along with Bill, our bus drivers are wearing their masks going down the road. Um, some of them do pull them under their nose for um, their glasses fogging up. That is a big concern with us. Um, when he also talked about the east-west driving, I was also driving her out this morning. When you were heading east, it was brutal with that sun. Um, so we're trying to be vigilant too with drivers and everybody, but everything has been going well. We, uh, we did have somebody run through our red lights yesterday last night on ninth street uh, we have a stop by the bp amico down here it actually went through the first bus that was stopped and actually the second bus that was stopped behind it with the red lights we do not have cameras on the outside of our buses we just have them on the inside we couldn't get a plate number off the truck because it was pulling a trailer but um law enforcement's worked great with us on that we usually just get a plate number and they usually will go check it out or ticket them which is great um, other than that, um, we, we've had a few run the stop signs already this year, um, but I think school's going good. Everything has been running pretty smooth actually for um, the start of the year with everything going on. So we've been very pleased with everything. If anybody has any questions, just let me know, I guess. Any questions for Ryan? Thank you. And again, re referencing the East, uh, uh, the sun coming up in the east. Pretty soon, don't worry, it'll be dark all day. I just have a quick comment for um, Ryan and the, well, the bus company, and just to let everyone know, um, Menominee Transportation was wonderful to help the Menominee Lions Club do a Stuff the Bus event here a couple of weeks ago. So um, Kyle Howe spent the whole day with us, and we drove around and picked up school supplies and delivered them to um, Stepping Stones, Foster Closet, and West Cap. And it was a great day and we really appreciated Menominee Transportation's support of that event. Great, thank you. Anybody else? If not, I have to pay attention here. Uh, we'll go to the medical emergency reports. Anybody from the Red Cross? Jenny here, I don't see anybody. But again, I've got a phone number down at the bottom that I can't identify. So if that's you, speak up. Jim, that's me, Melissa Gillenbach. Oh, Melissa. Oh, well, we'll get to you later. Yep. Th thanks for identifying yourself, though. No problem. Um, 
Nobody from the Red Cross Red Cedar. Mary? Yes, good morning. Um, I did send, um, thanks to Rick, he sent out a, an update and I sent out a PowerPoint update as well, piggybacked on that. So if you have that, that's great. Um, just kind of a COVID update. Um, the Northwest Wisconsin region, we've stood down our incident command system or structure. Um, and we've just tried to put everything into operations at this point in time. A few things we're continuing to do is door screening, um, mandatory masking, limited visitor policy enforcement, and a lot of working from home. So we have a lot of staff working at home. Um, we are continued focusing on keeping our staff healthy um, and the community healthy through our model, the behavior campaign internally to really encourage staff to mask at work and as well as when they're in the community. Um, as you may suspect, we, um, our, our governance task force monitors COVID and does some modeling or some um, predictive analysis on, on what our ICU bed capacity will be in the Northwest Wisconsin region. And despite the rise in um, testing and positive cases in the county, we are still at a green status, meaning uh, we won't be anywhere near our 50% ICU bed capacity for our region. That said, um, so from September 1st through yesterday, our testing numbers have increased significantly. Um, on September 1st, we did 22 tests and yesterday we did 107. And so we have about a 13 and a half to 14% positive rate, which is pretty consistent with the county. And, and obviously that is in those 20 to 29 year olds. So um, we also are monitoring our staff impact. And if you got, our, got my PowerPoint, you can see our numbers are just are rising. Um, they're all rising consistently. So uh, let's see. We are also active participants in the Dunn County Community Recovery Team, the Wash Up, Back Up, and Mask Up campaign. So we're encouraging that throughout our, our community to keep our county open. A um, couple of other updates. We are renaming our special care unit in our hospital. It was a four bed unit. Um, whenever we did our big remodeling in the hospital, we called it a special care unit. And we are now renaming that to a progressive care unit, which is really aligning um, consistently with our region from a naming perspective, and um, it just allows us to provide consistent patient care, staff training, and room assignments across our Northwest Wisconsin uh, locations. And really the patient benefit is to reduce expenses of unnecessary transfers and closer access to family support in their own community. We have basically physicians in-house 24 seven. And so the level of care that we're able to provide is consistent with that progressive care unit care provided in Eau Claire. Um, at least on one of their floors. So we just felt that it was the right decision to, to make. And um, like I said, we have basically physicians in-house 24 seven. We have hospital medicine providers, um, um, nurse practitioners and PAs and during the evening and physicians during the day. We've got a number of retirements. Um, many of you probably knew Jim Walker retired in June. Um, Joe Heimler and Carrie Nelson are both, Dr. Carrie Nelson are both retiring October 1st. So they'll have, they'll, uh, we'll feel big losses with them. They're, they've been great community partners and um, physicians in our community for many years. Um, Steve Lindbergh has also announced his retirement. Um, that'll be at the end of 2020. And a few physicians, Dr. Thermali, Dr. Ali, and Dr. Dahmer have all left for other opportunities. And we have our 25th anniversary over 25 years ago, Red Cedar Clinic was approached um, by male leadership to consider joining the health system. After a lot of consideration by the board of directors and a committee of uh, clinic staff, hospital staff, and community members, Red Cedar joined Mayo Clinic Health System in 1995, and Myrtle Worth joined, uh, followed suit in 1996. So in light of the COVID, I mean, we love to celebrate. We love to celebrate new providers coming. We love to celebrate retirements. We love to celebrate anniversaries. But in light of that, we are giving out ice cream on Wednesday <laughs> at, for our staff. So. That's kind of the most that we can do at this point in time. Um, let's see, what else? And I think that's it for my report, unless there are any other questions. Other questions for Mary? Now, I just live right up the street, so when the ice cream gets handed out, could I be staff? <laughs> well, I don't know, we don't allow you in unless you have a purpose to be here, so if you have an appointment, maybe. <laughs> be there to get ice cream. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. Any questions? Um, 
Katie Gallagher from Public Health. Don't see Katie. Anybody here representing Public Health? Um, then Melissa, it's your turn. Thank you. Um, I really don't have anything on the disaster um, topic. You know, just we're busy assisting with uh, COVID as much as we can and assisting people in getting the PPE they need. And we are trying to work on a grant for some housing for the homeless during the winter season. There have been, you know, a shift in the thought process with opening uh, the Stepping Stones facility this winter and how the housing would work um, and how many they could house uh, based on the need and what they have available. And there's definitely a need for Dunn County to look at some other options. So we're trying to write a grant to get some funding to help um, you know, house the homeless during this winter season and, and COVID with the COVID concerns. So that's probably all about I have. Great. Thank you, Melissa. I might mm -hmm. just mention that uh, the hazard mitigation plan, which is kind of ex uh, related to this, um, has been redone and that will go to the uh, county board in a month or two for approval. Uh, it's a long-term plan that the uh, 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 West Central Planning Commission has been working on for us. So we're about ready to implement, or uh, not implement, but uh, revise that plan and have it approved. Anything else for uh, Melissa regarding disaster preparedness, anything? Melissa, um, this is Mary. I'm just curious, so is stepping, are you saying that stepping stones is likely not going to open or is there a number, a limited number of people they can house? And uh, my second part of that question is, do you have locations, if the county were to get a grant, are there specific locations that you're thinking to house them? And what, do you have any other details on that? Um, you know, I don't have a lot of details, Mary. I think the last conversation that I was in, which was probably at least three weeks ago, is that stepping stones um, could open, but for very a very small number, like it was two. Um, and we had several last winter that took advantage of the situation, you know, took advantage of the resources that were available at Stepping Stones. So if they're still going to go with that um, number of like two um, that they can safely house there, last I knew we were kind of looking at putting them up in a local hotel and the grant funding would pay for the daily fee at the local hotels for them. Okay, that I'll be I'll be interested in how that goes because that's that has a huge impact on the medical center. Historically, lots of people would come and and we'd always have issues with people loitering. Obviously, now without um, with our visitor restriction policy, they won't be there. And so I'm just mm -hmm. really concerned about the safety of those homeless individuals in our community. Yeah, it is. It is definitely a concern. You know, um, that's why we're trying to get the funding. I mean, and, and currently, right now, it's a grant from the state that's being approved monthly. Um, you know, so we may apply for it, get approved, and you know, we might be approved for the month of October, November, December, and come January, the funding is no longer available. So we have to go to Plan B or C. But um, that is kind of the last thing that I knew that we were looking at um, was the possible hotel situation and, and we would just pay for the funding through that grant. If you need any help with that, I'd be happy to help. I'm even thinking we could look at the community foundation. They may have, um, they may have funds to support okay. that or grants that we could potentially write for that as well. Sure. Okay. Thank you, Mary. I appreciate it. Yep. Anything else for Melissa? Thank you, Melissa. Um, Scott, you're double dipping today? Yep, nothing to report here though. Okay. Um, Andy, fire department. Yeah, not anything really specific to report on. Um, earlier in the spring, due to COVID, our call volume was down 25 to 30%. Now we're down, depending on the day, only five to eight percent so our our calls have significantly increased um when stout came back you know you throw nine ten thousand 
extra people in the town. So those calls have uh, increased with the ambulance. But other than that, nothing really specific. Questions for Andy? Seeing none. Uh, Katie, UW Extension. Sure. Um, I can talk about agriculture and uh, September 20th to the 26th represents the National Farm Safety and Health Week. Their uh, motto this year is every farmer counts. And so some things that they are highlighting is of course tractor safety as we get into fall harvest, having those lights on, flashers going when possible, um, and that rural roadway safety that's out there. So. Um, we are ahead uh, as far as harvest, uh, corn silage chopping has begun. We're about uh, almost 10 days ahead of average uh, for that. Uh, with corn silage coming off, manure application is then going on. So see a lot of tankers going out hauling manure onto those farm fields. Uh, potato harvest is about five days ahead of average and it looks like apple picking has certainly begun. So. We will, especially on these larger farms, start to see some cover crop application that is happening. There's a, uh, a pilot that they hire that comes and typically does that for a lot of the farms. And so uh, sometimes I get some calls when that yellow plane is flying around uh, like we did when they were out doing the gypsy moth applications. So we are looking to do some curriculum development. Uh, a lot of our courses, of course, are moving online. So we utilize Canvas, that's the online curriculum, uh, to have that material. And so we will, looks like, have a livestock transportation training and certification that uh, hopefully next year will be available for emergency responders to have so that they, they know how to um, respond and handle livestock uh, during those accidents. So, of course, looking at overall farmer health, and um, haven't heard a huge increase in COVID with farmers, but um, have heard isolated cases with farm employees. Um, that's all I have, unless there are questions. So increased uh, farm traffic probably for the next couple of weeks, right? Yes, isolated uh, spots of frost out there. So I imagine combines will start rolling here in the next month. Any questions for Katie? Thank you. Um, there's uh, nothing for item number seven. Um, item number eight, next meeting date is December 18th. And I expect that all of you will be wearing your antlers and Santa hats and uh, other things since we're going to be on Zoom. I uh, want to thank uh, Patty and John and Krista for helping to set up and facilitate the meeting. And if there is no other business for the good of the order, uh, I will declare the meeting adjourned. And thanks, folks. Thanks to all of you for what you do and for your reporting today. Take care. Stay safe.